one of the greatest gifts known to mankind is the gift of love. It is an endowment from heaven upon man. But in this lesson, Paul lets us know that there are other gifts. These gifts, ladies and gentlemen, are temporary. Oh, ho, ho. we're going to have fun with this one. There are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click that link. Get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bibles. For the International Standard Sunday School lesson is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Rodney Jones with our Sunday school lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes. Get your lessons and get ready. Now let's go. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday School Lesson as taught by Pastor Dr. Rodney Jones. I am the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries, Church of God in Christ. We're located at 1700 West on 87th Street right here in the city of Chicago. Our zip code is 60620. If this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below that this is your first time. I'd like to welcome you to Sunday School. You can also drop me an email to Rodney Jones Sunday School at gmail.com. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Click that bell notification and click the word all so YouTube will notify you. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. We got a good one here on today. We're dealing with freedom to love. We're in the love chapters. Uh, Romans the 13th chapter verses 8 through 13. And then we shift over to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 8 through 13. Our date for discussion is November the 11th, one day after my 60th birthday, November the 11th. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show you that when I come back. But let us get right into the reading of our lesson. We thank you for this day, for this hour, and for this moment. Be blessed and be edified in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, very interesting lesson today. We're talking about freedom to love. Uh, Paul is the writer of both the book of 1 Corinthians as well as the book of Romans. And I pray that you're not hearing the loud noise in my background. It's that time of night. If you can't hear it, that means I got a very good microphone. So we're shifting first to uh, Romans, the first chapter, verses eight, uh, 13, 8 through 10. In this lesson, I'm going to show you that these gifts that we have been magnifying and glorifying and bragging about and abusing and using them, I'm going to show you that these gifts are really temporary. But there is one gift that Paul is going to mention. And he's going to let us know that that gift is not temporary. That gift is permanent. In other words, when God comes back, when he raptures his people, this particular gift will still be going on in heaven. No other gift is going to be going on in heaven like this one is. Let's see if we can get to the reading of our scripture. Yes. He says, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth Another hath fulfilled the law. He that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Let me kind of organize here and pull this up right here so I can get to doing some writing on the screen. Yes, I will be writing from my iPad. That, that, there it is. Sorry, y'all. So first thing he says is to O. O. No man. Now, when you think about that, the question is, when he says no man, is he referring to just uh, those who are of the body of Christ or those who are saved or unsaved? 
And is he also referring to utilities uh, or uh, any type of debt that we have? Uh, very good question because that, that kind of came up. So the writer of this letter would be the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Rome. Of course, we understand that there was a mixed culture. There were Jews and there were Gentiles in uh, this particular church in Rome that he was writing to. He first of all tells them that they should honor the powers that be. I think that's a very good lesson for us to know that regardless of who we are and what we do, we can never escape the fact that we are supposed to give honor or reverence to the powers that be. We're supposed to respect the judge, the police officer, the governor, the president, and all of these because these are powers that was placed down here on earth. I'm not saying that they're not abusing it, but we're still to be subject to as believers. Paul was letting us know that we are supposed to render unto Caesar what Caesar's, as Jesus said, or render unto whoever the powers that be. But then he gets down to where he starts to talk about some other things that we are or are not supposed to do. So believers in Christ are to live a life according to the standards of the scriptures. Believers do not dodge their responsibilities on earth because we are Christ-like and the world should see Christ in us by the actions that we uh, do on earth. In other words, don't get a debt and decide not to pay it, to dodge from it, to hide from it, because that's not fair to the people we got the credit from. That includes myself. But we're going to move on. So he says, oh, which means uh, to be, the word oh means to be indebted to. What he's saying is, or to be under obligation, to be bound or obliged by. What he's saying is, don't owe nobody. Don't be indebted to anybody. But what he wants us to do is to love. I love this word love here because it means to value, to esteem, or even to feel or manifest generous concern for. This word love also means to delight. And we're going to find out that this is the most important word of this entire lesson. Because to love someone is to value them. To value them is to esteem them. To esteem them is really to place them higher. Scripture lets us know that we're supposed to prefer one over the other. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to see what was taking place in the other church. So the only obligation we are to have with each other is to love because you can never, can never pay your love. You can only do what love is. And this particular love is not a self-centered love. This is what's called an unselfish love. This is a going out of your way to help your brother type of love. This is the same love that you find in John 3 and 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So scriptures even lets us know that don't even take advantage of the poor, Deuteronomy 24 and 14. In other words, if you owe him money, you have his money, pay him his money the time you're supposed to pay him, and don't even go to bed with his money in your pocket because he needs it. It's what scripture says. And he will cry to God, and then God will be angry with you for keeping that poor man's money. He says, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. He that loves another has fulfilled, hath fulfilled. Now, look at that word, another. Uh, you might find something interesting here. Uh, but to love one another is slightly different here because this is to reciprocate. Uh -oh. That's what's called a mutual love. You love me and I love you back. You care for me, I care for you back. So oh no man but to love one another. We're supposed to reciprocate with our love. Now he didn't say oh no believer. He says oh no man. That is an individual. Then he says but because for he that loveth another, he has fulfilled. He has fulfilled the law. And we're going to talk about this law he has fulfilled, which means to satisfy or to complete, to finish a period or a task. That what the law was trying to do. If you look in Galatians 5 and 14, he says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor 
as thyself. All the law is fulfilled in that one word that you will love your neighbor as yourself. For this, now he's getting ready to talk about a portion of the law. Watch what he says. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment right here, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Notice the word shalt keeps uh, uh, coming up. I'm going to highlight it. Shalt right there. Shalt. 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 This is a declarative statement. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not kill. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Now, this is a very interesting statement right here. Don't bear false witness against uh, 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 anyone. Then he says, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, because I'm going to show you there were some commandments that was missed. He said, it's briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And let's see what we can look at in verses number nine. So he gives a brief list of the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue or the covenant that God made between himself and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai, uh, Exodus 19th chapter, Exodus the 20th chapter. He's not telling the whole list. He's given a specific type of list. There were two commandments or there were two stones. There was the first stone and the second stone. The first stone deals with man's relationship to God. You should have no other God before me, so on and so forth. The second set deals with man's relationship with man. And this is what Paul gives in this particular one because Paul is really talking about love. He says, when you do this, you fulfill the law, the royal law or the law. You fulfill, uh, you complete uh, that second set of commandments, and that's how you're supposed to treat one another. Now, the King James says, uh, bear false witness. Well, your other translations doesn't say this. I don't know if y'all saw that or not. Something else is not in here. The honor of that father and that mother is not mentioned in this example as well. Y'all pray for my sinus. I'm really sick, and I'm trying not to get too sick because I'm leaving Saturday morning on my birthday, I'll be flying out going to Florida because I'm going on another cruise for my 60th. Come on, by somebody. So Paul feels not the need to bring this commandment up to the church. Prior to this lesson, he tells them to honor the powers that be. But those two things. But yet he says that, uh, where is it? He says, if there be any other, let me show you right there. He says right here, if there be any other, all or all of the other commandments, such as honor that father and that mother and all that, all of that is still briefly comprehended, briefly comprehended uh, in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, I'm not going to go into the depth, but I will mention uh, the bare false witness, which means the other falsehoods in giving testimonies or to testify falsely. To testify against a neighbor and not be truthful was a sin against God. Telling lies, the Bible said, about others is like hitting them with an axe and shooting them. That's Proverbs 22 and 18 or 25 and 18. And many people died or were wrongly persecuted or even imprisoned because of a false witness. Proverbs 24, 28 says, Be not a witness against thy neighbor without a cause or without cause and deceive not with thy lips. He also says, thou shalt not covet. The word covet means to lust for or to seek for something that is not yours or even that is forbidden. What happens is when we covet someone else's object, item, or whatever, we tend to do things out of pride, out of jealousy, and out of hatred against them. So it's best for you to either work for or pray for God to give it to you. What happens is we get upset and we get impatient and we don't want God. We can't wait for him. And so we tend to move forward only to take it from someone else. 
He said, but all of this is briefly comprehended. The word comprehended means to comprise, to sum up again, or to condense into a summary. Uh, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Question come up, who is my neighbor? Well, your neighbor is any person uh, or any other person. There it is. And where there are two concerned, he, it would be the other person. If it's you and somebody else, the neighbor is the somebody else. So all of that is comprehended in this or summarized in this uh, one thing to love your neighbor as yourself. Because what happens is when you love your neighbor as yourself, you tend to treat people correctly and uh, the right way. Verses number 10 says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. There's that neighbor again, because we're talking about love. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling. So Paul continues his discourse about the effects and the ministry of love. Love does not do things to hurt anyone or to affect anyone negatively. Love does not seek its own purpose, but the purpose and the will of the Father. Uh, love does not wrong others, which means it uh, or I should say love does no wrong to others, which means it fulfills the requirements of God's law. No wonder why Paul starts out with, oh, no man, but to love. Love is the pivoting point and it's the motivation behind everything that we do. He says it, this love, this particular love is what we call brotherly love. This brotherly love is affectionate love, affection. Brotherly love, affection, or goodwill, or love, or even benevolence. It is my desire and my will towards you that you would be prosperous and have good journey and goodwill, even if I have to go out my way to make sure. He says, it worketh. The word worketh means to commit, to labor, or even to perform. No ill, no bad, no evil, no wicked, no wrong or producing evil or even misfortune to that neighbor again. However, here, the word neighbor also means friend. So anything we do is motivated by love, and it does not produce bad habits, evil, or wrong to our brother. Love, goodwill towards others, will not produce wrong or even misfortunes to others, but it is the fulfilling of the law. The word fulfilling means completing and or the accomplishing. It accomplishes and fulfills and completes that which the law was setting out to do. Now we jump over, ladies and gentlemen, to 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, or the 13th chapter, I should say. And we go with verses number one or eight. Yes, jump on in there. We're still talking about that word right there, love. That word, it never faileth. Now, I want you to watch how he says some things. He says, love, it never faileth, okay? But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. And that's a different type of fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Let's look at what he's saying now. Let me see if I can do this. Let's look at it. It's going to vanish away. This is going to cease. And this is going, it will not, it will fail. But this will not fail. Look at the words. All of them have something in common. Shall fail, shall cease, shall vanish away all end up stopping, ending, or reaching its point. You see that? The only thing that does not stop, fade, or reach its point is charity. He says it never faileth. So in chapter 12, let me put this here, Paul closes with, yet show I unto you a more perfect example or perfect or a more excellent way. Today's lesson is between chapters 12 and chapters 14, of which Paul is showing a more excellent way in verses or chapter number 13. The key word in this entire thing is the word charity. 
Charity, according to my long definition, is love, affectionate regard. Charity is goodwill or benevolence. With reference to God's love, it is God's willful direction towards men. It involves God doing what he knows is best for man and not necessarily what, God de what man desires. For example, John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave man not what he wanted, but he gave man what was best for man, and that's Jesus. So charity is the love that comes from God, John 3 and 16. This is the highest level of love because it is what we call unconditional. Charity takes a person out of their way for the benefit of others. It takes the focus off the person and places it on the person love. For God so loved that he gave. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 7 and 8, love is of God. He also says in John 13 and 35, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you love, have loved one to another. Jesus says, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Then he says, continue in my love. That's John 15 and 9. I think I'm going to stop right there. Other than Romans 5 and 5 says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 and 22 is love. So Paul is showing us that nothing can surpass love. Not a gift, not an ability, not a language, not a blessing nor benevolence, not an almsgiving, not a sacrificing or anything. Nothing can outdo or surpasses love. He's getting ready to get into some deep stuff right now. He's about to get some people a little bit upset. So he says, it never, it never, never, because the people of Paul's time, I need you to understand, the people of his time may have been boasting about their particular gifts from God. They were boasting and bragging about speaking in tongues, boasting and bragging about the gifts of prophecies or the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. They were bragging and abusing. That goes to show us that it can be done. Jesus says, uh, you cast out devils in my name and all that. He said, but I still didn't know you. So he mentions four categories of blessings that will come to some type of end or maybe not. Charity, prophecies, tongues, and knowledge. Three of which are going to end, but one of which is not. It never fails. Ch uh, he says, never fail, watch this, shall fail, shall cease, and shall vanish away. Charity will never fail. Prophecies shall fail, tongues shall cease, and knowledge shall vanish away. However, Paul is not referring to now. He's talking about a later time, and we're going to see why. He says charity, which is brotherly love, affection, goodwill, love, or even benevolence, it never, never at any time faileth. The word faileth here means to lose, to become inefficient, to fall out, to fall down, or to fall off. Charity, unlike any other endowments, will never come to an end because you will find charity or love even in heaven. Have to because God is love. Now he says, whether there be prophecies, prophecies is a discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purposes of God. Prophecy is the voice of God in man. Prophecy is when God speaks to man. But he says what's going to happen is going to fail. This word fail means to cease, to pass away, to be done away, or even to be discharged from its duties. That word fail because prophecies is temporary. He says whether there be tongues, they're going to cease. Tongues or gifts of tongues, the ability to speak multiple languages, speaking in tongues, unknown tongue, new tongue, or other tongue, he said they're going to stop. They're going to be left off. They're going to desist or refrain. Not now, but later. I need you to know Paul is not talking about right now. There are a lot of people and some of your commentators believe that speaking in tongues have ceased. There are some 
pastors believe that there are no miracles anymore that they left off with the apostles. I need you to understand that they still do exist. The simple fact that birth is a miracle, healing is a miracle, salvation is a miracle, so on and so forth. How many of you have ever experienced a miracle? I've seen one. Go ahead and write it in the comment section below. I've seen a miracle or I am a product of a miracle. He said, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away, uh, or, which is the same as fail. The word vanish away means to cease, to pass away, to be done with, to discharge from. So any and all types of word of knowledge, or whatever the case may be, he says, it's going to all cease. Not now, but it will cease. As the curtains open up, let me put that right there. And then let me see. Oh, there it is right there. Now watch this now. He says, for we know in part and we prophesy. Now that word part is going to keep showing up. We know in part and we prophesy. We have a knowledge. We have a knowledge. Oh, I didn't know y'all could see that. We, <laughs> we have a knowledge uh, of, of uh, in part and we prophesy. We speak the wisdom we speak the words of God, whatever the case may be, we do this in part. But watch this. But when that which is perfect, and that will take place in the coming of Christ. Because this will be the fulfillment of our assignment when he comes back. He uses the word perfect, which also means to be fulfilled or to be complete. So, but when that which is perfect is come, notice he said is come, is come, then that which is in part, fourth time, that something is done away. So he has mentioned, let me see, that the prophecy and the tongues will become useless in a certain time. At the present time, everything we do is only temporary in part. He said that knowledge is partial and incomplete. The gift of prophecy only reveals a part of the whole picture. That's why the word is word of knowledge, because it's a word. It is not the full expression of knowledge. But when the times of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. Every gift we use down here on earth is temporary and is only holding us here for the perfecting of the body of Christ. Once he comes back, there will be no need. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. He said, we know in part and we prophesy in part. To know means to understand or to become acquainted with. We know in part. The word in part means in a measure or even to some degree. We prophesy, which means to speak forth by divine inspirations, to, uh, to predict or to utter forth or to declare a thing which can only be known by divine re revelation. All this, he says, we're doing this in part. But with that which is perfect, the word perfect means brought to its end, finished, or even full grown, it's come. Now, Paul's got to play a little game here. He's going to talk about when he was a kid. Okay? My nose is getting bad now. I better hurry up. When it is come, which means to be established, to become known, or even to appear, then that which is in part, in a measure, or to some degree, shall be done away with, or to be done away, which means to cause to cease, to put to an end, to do away with, to annul, or even to abolish. Notice what is going to take place when that which is perfect is come then all of that will be done away with. So Paul uses the word done away, which means it will not be used anymore. It has reached its end. In verse 8, he used the word vanish away. In verse 11, he used the word put away. In verse e, uh, 10, in verse 11, he used the phrase done away. All of which imply coming to an end and not using it anymore. Excuse me. Oh, it's getting worse. Look at what he said now. Crumble down and <laughs> crumble down and fall. 
Now remember, he's talking about imperfect and perfect. He's talking about partial. When I was a child, look at what he said. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put, there's the word put away again. I put away childish things. Now, Paul is very unique in what he's saying. Because I'm going to show you, he's talking about these spiritual gifts. He's calling these spiritual gifts. We go, let, let's look at this. Ah, oh, I forgot to get my name. Boop. Boom, done. All right, let's go. Verse of number, fly. See you later, bye-bye. Don't come back. Okay. He says, for now we see through a dark glass, a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Notice this word keeps coming up. Now. I mean, no, right here. Not that. Now. We see through a glass, darkly. But then, 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 face to face. Now in part, but then shall I know even as I am also known. Fly. <laughs> and now, abide in faith, hope, charity. These three but the greatest of these is charity. So Paul uses an illustration of a child growing up to demonstrate the same things are temporary. He says when he was a child, he spoke, he understood, and he thought as a child. When he became a man, he put away childish things. The Corinthian church was playing with these temporary gifts as if they would last forever. They were bragging. They were boasting. They were abusing. They were shining the light on their gifts, but they were not operating out of love. So they were not pure and they were not as effective because they just had the gift, but it was not motivated. It was not used by and through love. And so Paul is using these gifts uh, in, a, in a way and as he talks about himself, when I was a child, I did childish things. I thought and I act like a child. But now that I'm a grown man, I put away these childish things. He's trying to tell them, stop acting like children with these temporary gifts. The greatest of these gifts is love. So they were playing with the temporary gifts. So the only gift that will last forever is the gift of love. Gifts of tongues, prophesying, knowledge of God. Mysteries are all temporary on the earth. Soon the Lord will rapture his people and there won't be no need for any of these. Love is the only thing that will always be, whether on earth or in heaven. He says we see through a glass or a mirror, which means we only see a reflection of things. One day we will see things face to face as they are in the world to come. We will see and be in the presence of God himself. He says, we know we prophesy in part, but one day we will know the fullness of God. But then he says, now abide the faith, hope, and charity. The greatest of these three is charity. Faith being fully persuaded in God. Faith that we will go back with him when he returns. Hope is a desire of something with expectation of receiving it. But when we get to heaven, the only of these that will exist is love. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a beautiful lesson. Let me finish my announcement. Uh, I will have my six, all oh, the church is giving me a 60th birthday. Yes, I turned 60 on November the 11th, Veterans Day. And I will be flying to Florida. I'll be in Miami, Florida at the embassy. I think it is downtown with the airport or something like that. And then Sunday morning, we will be uh, getting on the boat and going on a seven day cruise to Belize and all those other places. There it is right there. So if you want to support me, I would love for you all to come and be my special guest. And let's take our selfies because y'all know I love to take me some selfies. All right, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for this time. Listen, if those who that give and that support this channel know that as you support me, 
you're supporting the kingdom because I always give back to the kingdom. I'm always pouring out and pouring into the lives of people. I don't do church work no more. I do kingdom work, which means I don't care what denomination, I don't care what church you go to. If you're a human and you're in need, I am going to see a need. I am going to meet the need as much as possible. Make sure you like and subscribe this channel. I need that heavy thumbs up. Make sure you share, share, share. I'm looking to hit 40,000 this year. That would be a milestone for me. Make sure you share this lesson to your loved one and to your friend. There will be no live stream this coming Sunday because I will be getting on the boat. So there will be no live stream this coming Sunday. Drop me a comment in the below. What is it that you like about this lesson? Uh, or what areas or, or, or whatever the case may be. Holla, holla. Is that what they say? Holla at your boy. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. Peace.